Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listener. Thanks to all of you, Justin Zellers, Pepper Giese, Carmine Bailey, and Aaron Martina. On this episode of DTNS, we clear up the confusion about when you'll get Apple intelligence. Amazon will use predictive algorithms to tell you what's about to happen in Thursday night football games and why the passing of James Earl Jones leaves behind a huge test case for generative models. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, September 10th, 2024 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. From Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Oh, did you all have a, a good uh, recovery from Apple Announcement Day? Everybody doing okay? Doing Out okay. There? Doing okay. Yeah. Thank you for asking, Tom. It was tough, sure. uh, but we're, 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 we're back. Always a bit of a whirlwind yeah. when you have to deal with a... A Tim Cook hello and a Federighi joke there, and a new iPhone. There, there are a few people who just happen to text me or need things, you know, where I was like, live event, BRB. I just kept saying that, like, you know, some sort of a strange robot or like later people were like, oh, sorry, we didn't know. Yeah, like, well, I just wanted to borrow a cup of this sugar. Stuff, you don't yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, well, we do follow this stuff so they don't have to. That's why we're here. Let's start with the quick hits. Back in 2016, uh, the European Commission ruled that Ireland had illegally given Apple tax benefits and ordered Apple to pay 13 billion euros in back taxes. Both Apple and Ireland argued that Apple had properly accounted income in the U.S. and paid taxes there, and to subject it to European tax was double taxation. At issue were profits generated from the intellectual property licenses held by Apple's international and European arms. Monday, the European Court of Justice disagreed with the EC and ordered funds held in escrow during the case to be released back to Ireland. The European Court of Justice also upheld a 2 point Four billion euro EU competition fine against Google for abusing its market power by ranking its shopping services over rivals. The fine resulted from an investigation by the European Commission that concluded in 2017. So seven years from the conclusion of the investigation to the final decision here, eight years in the Apple case. You know, just in case you're wondering how long these things take to work through court. There's a couple examples for you. Following Apple's announcement on Monday, Huawei officially launched its dual-hinged three-screen foldable called the Mate XT Ultimate Design. Prices start at 19,999 won, which is about 2,800 US dollars. Pretty pricey. The hinge folds in a Z shape. The outer screen is 6.4 inches when fully folded up and can unfold to 10.2 inches when all three screens lay flat. A partial unfold gives you 7.9 inches of screen. A Z fold. I was really expecting it does look like a, like a tri fold, but I guess that makes sense because then you can just do two or all three. Uh, during a short technical presentation on Tuesday, Sony officially announced the PlayStation 5 Pro console. Sony says the Pro has a bigger GPU. You could have guessed that part. Supports advanced ray tracing and PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution. That's an upscaling algorithm system similar to NVIDIA's DLSS or AMD's FSR. Sony promises 45% faster rendering and says as a player, if you get the Pro, you won't have to choose between performance and how good the video Video looks looks wise on the outsized this thing has the three stripes down the side that distinguishes it from the other ps5 models as expected it does not appear to have a disc tray from the photos the ps5 pro will launch november 7th for 699 dollars and 99 cents uh tomorrow we're going to talk to scott johnson a little more about what benefits you might see if you actually decide to buy this Sometime in December, Aurora will send one of its autonomous trailer trucks for 200 miles between Dallas and Houston in Texas without a safety driver on board. Now, if all goes well, Aurora plans to scale up to dozens and eventually thousands of these kinds of trips. Ars Technica notes that a company called Gatix, Gatic rather, is working on shorter trips for box trucks with Walmart and Kroger, and Kodak is developing long-haul trucks similar to Aurora as well. Kodak has contracts with industrial and military customers. I'm sorry, it's Kodiak. That, that Kodiak. was my, my typo there. Uh, and that is a look at the quick hits. <laughs> Would have been funny if Kodak was doing that. 
James Earl Jones died on Monday at the age of 93. We were uh, we were sad to pass that along at the end of GDI yesterday. Uh, Jones, of course, portrayed so many different enduring roles. I remember him as playing Alex Haley, the author of Roots in the TV miniseries Roots. That's one of my earliest memories of him. He played Admiral Greer in The Hunt for Red October, Terrence Mann in Field of Dreams. If you build it, he will come. And of course, Mufasa in The Lion King. But everybody's going to remember him as Darth Vader. Uh, and he will also probably continue to provide the voice of Darth Vader. Uh, we covered this a couple of years ago. Jones licensed his voice to be used to train a model from a Ukrainian company called Respeecher. Uh, and that was used in Disney Plus's Obi-Wan Kenobi series. We covered that story in 2022. It is not clear from the public reports that those rights include post-mortem uses, but everyone's talking about it as if it does. So I'm going to assume we'll find out for sure soon enough, but it seems likely that he licensed it in perpetuity. Said, yeah, you know, you pay my estate after I'm gone, pay me while I'm here this much, and you can use my voice. It is the first situation where an actor, while alive, authorized his voice to be used to train a model to perform in his place, and with consent, it will continue to be used to perform after his death. Uh, not to minimize the passing of James Earl Jones. He was a great actor, and it is sad that he is gone, lived a good long life at 93 years old. But he does be leave behind, Sarah, kind of a precedent-setting situation where, at least for Darth Vader, Right? We don't know if this applies to any of his other characters, but at least for Darth Vader, his voice will continue to be the voice of Darth Vader. Yeah, as I understand it, uh, for the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, um, you know, again, James Earl Jones was in his 90s at this point and kind of was like, I'm not into it, but uh, you can use my likeness. I'm fine with this. I'm still getting residuals type thing. And I think you hit the nail on the head here with if it's posthumous James Earl Jones uh, um, speech that is being generated um, for Darth Vader, his estate. I don't know how big his family is. I don't I have no idea about that, but I, I would think that that would be a really good reason where an actor, an actress um, would say, uh, this might continue on without me. And if so, the people that are in my life um, are going to benefit from it. So what do you think? <laughs> how, how does this sit with you? Because a lot of people, I, I think, are a little emotional about this. And, and while it seems like it's on the up and up, uh, I, I think some people are still creeped out about it. I'm not that creeped out about it. No. I mean, I I remember the only thing that I can even compare this to, and it's not a great comparison, is when Jim Henson died and Kermit the Frog got a new voice. Right. But that was one actor voicing Kermit the Frog and then another actor who sounded pretty similar, but still not the same, voicing Kermit the Frog. Now, if Kermit the Frog sounded the same the, the entire time after uh, the passing of Jim Henson... I would have been less creeped out as a kid. Sure. Now, but again, this is, this is, we're talking about characters in movies and TV shows. And so, he could, no, you could th actually go with the Henson estate's approval. You could go change Kermit back to sounding like he did when Jim Henson was voicing him. And now, and now no disrespect to voice actors everywhere, but I would want that. I would yeah. want that. You would want yeah. that because that's the voice you grew up with, because right? Because that's the voice. It, it's the voice. It's just, yeah. and and maybe that maybe that voice. You know, the the AI replication. I know it's real close, and we're going to get to the point where you, it's not discernible the difference. But uh, yeah, I would want that. I would. I would want that. What about, this is why I say this is precedent setting. So there, there's a little bit of unease about, ooh, okay, so we're going to keep hearing James Earl Jones. And we're going to, we might think about that. In fact, uh, TF87 is saying the only thing now is I see it as a distraction when I hear Darth Vader's voice in upcoming projects. Because you're going to think, oh, that's that's an AI. Right. And be right? looking for the little changes and, and this and that. Yeah. There's definitely There's definitely that going forward. I think, okay, so there are a few things. Uh, the 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 whole thing of you know who gets money from the use of James Earl uh, Jones's voice going forward, uh, you know those people are probably in in favor of this. Um, 
uh, the actor himself saying, I'm okay with this, or, or at least was, um, you know, before his death, but at a time where he was uh, unwilling or unable to participate uh, on the same level. That's another part of this. And then, yeah, like the creepiness factor of it. I don't know. I don't feel, I mean, it's, it's Darth Vader. <laughs> Let's, I mean, of yeah. all the like non creepy aspects of this, it's like, you know, it wasn't even the, you know, the, the voice wasn't even the same actor in the suit this entire time. This feels like almost right. the right, the right character to, to be able to get away with this with. And I, and I think, TF 87 is right. The first few times you're going to think about this. And I think real quickly you, you stop because it's just going to sound like Darth Vader and you're not going to think about it anymore. And that's where this becomes precedent setting. And it's like, well, if that worked, what if uh, we have these, these other characters, especially characters where you have somebody in a suit like Darth Vader and you can't, and you never had the actual person in the suit doing the voice anyway. Uh, you know, what about things like the Muppets? Can you just preserve all their voices forever? Uh, and and just just continue. Should we do that? I think, yeah. I think this t- today is not the day where that will be the conversation. You know, t- today is a day as a tribute to James Earl Jones. But one of the many legacies he's leaving behind is this: is this you know precedent setting use of his voice uh, in a way that will have him live forever, theoretically. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if 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 I passed away tomorrow and I said to the rest of you, well, I know you all can't live without me, so you can use my voice <laughs> forever and ever. But then the show became a totally different show. Well, that would be a problem or a potential problem, right? But now I'm not around to, yeah. to to have a say in it. So there's that too. And this is where we reveal that both Sarah and I have been gone for six years. <laughs> Just yes. AI has yes. been talking yes. this whole time. Yeah. I'm coming out of hibernation pretty soon, Tom. I don't know. Yeah. You. Are you scheduled? Yeah. <laughs> I'll have yeah, to check on I mine. Think this, this winter, or I don't know, next spring. I'll <laughs> the talk deep to, freeze. I'll talk, uh, and, talk to, and by that time, what will you be ready for, Sarah? <laughs> I'll be ready for some football is what I'll be ready for. Um, so this is, uh, uh, speaking of things that you may or may not be comfortable with, Amazon is going to show viewers of Thursday night uh, NFL games, football games, U.S. football this season, some new features, alerts driven by predictive algorithms. Now, they've uh, Amazon has been has been playing around with this uh, a bit already. Last season, the company had alerts that identified the movements of defensive players prior to the start of a play in order to predict who might make a run towards the quarterback. This season, uh, going a little bit further, Amazon is adding something called pressure alerts, which will try to predict, based on everyone's position, what defensive players are likely to do in the backfield and also on the line. Then there's coverage ID. That will try to identify defensive formations in real time before the play even starts. Amazon has partnered with the NFL to collect more than 500 million data points each season, then uses those to train the models uh, that then get fed to us, uh, the folks who are, are are watching all this, and then uses computer visions to interpret what is happening in real time. Now, if you don't follow uh, American football, I can imagine that you might be saying, I have no idea what you just said here, Sarah. Now, a lot of people who follow American football also don't really know what's going on half the time. Um, so this is, I think, a pretty valiant effort uh, on Amazon's part and the NFL, you know, for those of us at home to be like, okay, see, uh, so the offense, they're going to try to, ooh, they need a touchdown. The defense is going to do this and kind of lets us be a little bit more in on the game. But at the same time, Tom, does that make it less fun? Yeah, exactly. And and if you're not a sports fan, if you're not a football fan, you can think of your own sport. You're always wondering like, ooh, what's the team's next move? And if you're not a sports fan, maybe you're an esports fan. So maybe it's, you know, think about StarCraft or or Dota or 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 Call of Duty or something. Like what are the strategies that the competitors are going to employ? That's the fun of watching, right? And if you especially if you have a knowledgeable color commentator who can say, "All right, so what they might want to do here is uh, you know, arrange a zone defense uh in order to isolate the point guard, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. This kind of thing is going to be able to say, oh, what the defense is exactly going to do right now is this. And then if that happens all the time, 
I think it could take the fun out of it, Sarah. I think it could make it where you're like, well, now there's no surprises. There's no, what they should yeah. do is this. Will they do it? Uh, what they should do is this. Will the other team react to it? It, 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 it could be too good, right? It's, too it's good. almost like temperature well, in large language models. Like you don't want it to be right all the time or else then it becomes like, well, why am I watching this you're game? Just, you're yeah, like, you're no. just like, this is going to happen and now it's happening. However... Yeah. Um, the players are still human. They don't have access to this information. You know, so there can be like some, you know, defense play that uh, has been practiced a hundred times and just does not work. So True. I don't think it's going to make the game uh, not exciting. <laughs> Until yeah. we replace the humans with robot players, you're right. We right. we do have fallible yeah. humans. Yeah, I mean that's it's a really annoying. good point. Somebody slips, the whole thing gets fumbled. You know, like it's you, like they're even all sorts if you of things know what they're about to do, that doesn't mean they'll execute on it. So there's still some fun there. But what about cheating? You know, if yeah. if I sitting on my couch know what the right play is, if I sitting on my couch know what the defense is about to do, uh. Why can't the offense? Like, I know there'll be rules against it, but, you know, what if somebody figures out a way around those rules? Uh, not even just breaking the rules, but like, well, I'm not using Amazon's thing. I'm using my own generative model that I trained on this NVIDIA machine. Oh, I bought. yeah, yeah. I was thinking about, like, somebody at home, you know, how are they going to do hand signals to the team on the field? <laughs> right, the fans are watching the fan, Amazon in the stands. The fans stands. are all like, streaming Amazon and yelling out, they're doing a zone. <laughs> it's, just, it's number six. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I don't, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, and yeah, does that become something that teams are allowed to do? You know, it, it is, would a team be allowed to use AI in any capacity? Use its own, right? They're obviously not exactly. going to be allowed to use Amazon, but yeah, is that? No, is, just, just its own. I is mean, that going to be an issue? Right. And, you know, or is there only like one AI company that they can all use? So it levels the playing field. Right. I don't know. These are, these are very good questions. Also, Lion Jim Video pointed out something really uh, smart. Uh, maybe this can help get cameras ready for action shots. Like if you in the booth as the director know what kind of play that defense is about to take from one of these predictive models, uh, you you can get your shots ready. Like, okay, they're probably going to be trying to, you know, block a shot uh, or, you know, block a pass here and here, get, get isolated on those folks. Uh, that could be really helpful. That's a great thought. Hmm. Do you not like this? I, Cause I know you're an NFL fan. Do you yeah. like, not like this or does this add to your enjoyment? Well, good question. I, I feel like, okay, so I I am not the biggest NFL fan that ever lived. I, sure. I know how the game works. But you watch. Um, I, yeah. Oh, I watch. You know, the, you know we're, we're getting into football season. Like, this is what I do on Sundays. Thursday night, still getting used to that. Um, you know, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, there are times where I go, I don't understand what just happened, you know? And the person next to me explains it to me, and I go, oh, okay. You know, or I'm still like, I still don't understand what happened. This could help that and yeah. make me feel a little bit more included. I feel like I'm already in. This would, I would seem either, either you are just like a, like a, a like a you know, sort of sports stat um, addict kind of person. This might really, really appeal to you, but I think it appeals more to people who are somewhat on the fence of even knowing what's going on half the time and maybe it'll it help them feel more included. Yeah, I think, I think so. As a casual viewer, I, I sort of stopped watching the NFL in 1988. Uh, I think this, I would find this very helpful because there's all kinds of innovations and changes in play style that have happened, uh, since 1988, you know, since Reagan was president, they've changed the game a bit. So, so maybe this would be helpful for me. Uh, cause you know, I tend to watch two games a year and then the Super Bowl, maybe. Uh, I mean, and then again, remember the glowing hockey puck, <laughs> you know, it was supposed to help me <laughs> so, yeah. see things better and just didn't stick. Turns out all you needed was HD. You didn't need the hockey puck to glow. Right. Um, yeah. I do watch CFL games a lot. I'd be cool if they added this to the Canadian Football League as well, but they probably won't do that for a bit.
Uh, anyway, if you got feedback about anything that we talk about on the show and you want to bring it to our attention, one way you can do it is social media. Have you heard of it? Uh, it's everywhere. It's all the rage these days. You can get in touch with us at DTNS show on X. We're at DTNS show at mstdn.social on Mastodon. We're at Daily Tech News Show on TikTok and at DTNS Picks at DTNS PIX on Instagram and threads. Got a little follow-up from yesterday's Apple announcement. They usually do this in the fall. Uh, so WWDC in June is when they talk about new operating systems and then say they'll come later this year. Uh, the September and October announcements often are when they'll say, and this operating system will come out on this date. Generally speaking, iOS comes out three days before you can buy the new iPhone, and that's exactly what's happening this time. However, nicely, all of the operating systems from Apple are coming out at the same time. iOS 18, iPad OS 18, Mac OS Sequoia, Watch OS 11, and TV OS 18 all will release next Monday, September 16th. Uh, so everybody gets them. One thing that has caused confusion, uh, and I know uh, you talked about this on Apple Vision Show quite a bit yesterday, was the fact that Apple intelligence is not going to arrive on Monday, September 16th. It's available in the beta uh, for developers, but not for the rest of the world. Apple intelligence right. will arrive on iOS 18.1, iPad OS 18.1, and Mac OS Sequoia 15.1 in October in beta. So you'll get them in the point one upgrades in October. Sarah, you won't have to wait that long to be able to take advantage of these without having to get a developer account and, and all that song and dance. I know on Apple Vision Show yesterday, you were like, this seems shady. Does it feel less shady now? I guess so. I guess it feels, I, you know, shady, uh, Sometimes maybe that was uh, a little bit of yeah of a terse word um, mm. to use. Okay. What you know? So okay. So I am at this point not planning to get an iPhone 16 because I've got the 15 Pro Max. I like it. I've had it for less than a year. There, there's just no reason you know for for me to go crazy right now. Um, I have the um, um, develop uh, not developer, but uh, the I'm in the beta program. Um, so I, I've, I've gotten beta iOS 18 for some months now, but Eileen, co-host of Apple Vision Show, is in the uh, developer program. So she's been getting some stuff before, before I did. And maybe I had a little FOMO about that, but I don't think this is that big a deal. I don't. Um, now that I've, I've, I've kind of thought through this and there's been a lot of talk from a variety of uh, people who follow the Apple space. You have the non-Apple people who are just like, who cares? Who cares? This sucks. Yeah, I got Gemini um, right now. So, I'm a pixel yeah. fold. Yeah, so yeah. there's that. Yeah, like, you know, Google Lens already existed kind of thing. Yep. You've got, you know, the the folks in the middle being like, all right, well, I might want to upgrade. I, I'm, I'm interested in this. Is there anything that's really going to, you know, move the needle for me? And then you have, you know, the Apple folks who just you know, you can't say anything bad about Apple ever kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And I, I like to think I'm somewhere in the middle and I don't know. I, I'm, I'm interested in Apple intelligence. I really am. There are certain things that I saw in, uh, in the, uh, the keynote yesterday, just, just little stuff, but the Google, Le <laughs> it's not called Google lens, but you know what I mean? Um, but the base, the, the Apple, Apple equivalent of Google lens, the yeah. Apple equivalent of Google lens. I was like, you know what? That will come in handy. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I, I just want to like look at a plant and be like, what is that? Plant? What is that? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what is that? Or, you know, what, what's that language, uh, you know, on, on this restaurant, yep. like what kind of restaurant is this kind of thing? And that'll come in handy as will. I mean, I don't know so much about uh, making my own emojis, but we'll probably have fun with that too. Um, but uh, the 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 snippets, um, if I'm looking at notifications on my phone, you know, I've gotten ten emails. If that if that can make that email that I don't totally recognize make a little bit more sense before I jump into the email, I'm interested in a lot of that stuff. It's productivity stuff. It's little stuff though, and I think that. 
I was expecting, I was expecting something a little bit more. Wow. Look yeah. at what Apple did yesterday. And it's more of like, Oh yeah, Apple's doing what other companies are doing now. We with Nika and Terrence and I talked about in the extended show yesterday, how we always think the announcements are lackluster because we're always wanting that iPhone moment again. Right. And that rarely comes, but he, after a day of thinking about it, I do think this is one of the, the less, exciting iPhone announcements, even given that over expectation that people have, because there's nothing big about the hardware here that's different. Uh, and the big advantage is Apple intelligence. And I think a lot of people assume they're just going to get that, right? I have an iPhone 14. I will not be getting Apple intelligence. It only works on the 15 Pro models and the 16. But I think even I, who know that, don't really feel that. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get iOS 18 and get all the new stuff. Or alternatively, I'm not missing it. You're talking about email yeah. so summaries and notification summaries and pointing a camera to plant. A lot of that I can do with third-party apps, which, granted, is not as nice as having it built into the operating system. But but, but it's, yeah, it's already possible. Yeah, and and a lot of it I'm like, I can, I can live without. Like, or, or again, Gmail has it built in. So don't really need to worry about it being in the Apple. Again, none of these are bad features. It just feels like they are not the kind of features that are going to make me want to run out and buy a new phone to take advantage of them, especially because they're software features. And I feel like, well, why, why do I have to buy a new phone to take advantage of them? I know why. The reason why is because they want them to happen on device and you need more powerful hardware to do that to protect yeah. your privacy. Yeah, and they want to sell the devices. But I think a lot of people are going to be like, I don't really care about that. I'm like, yeah, I know some people care about that. I just want access to it. You know, I felt this way for, for some time with uh, some Apple announcements, but very much so yesterday is... There was, you know, as far as what is new, you know, better camera, best camera ever. Um, yeah, you know, every year. You know, you can do all the, all the different camera things. And there was a lot of emphasis on like, you know, as a creator, you know, your F stop, you know, the, the button is right there. Sure. And there, and that, that's, I'm, I'm sure that's true. And I am kind of, <laughs> speaking of FOMO, it's like, I do always want the best camera in a phone, but am I like, shooting a movie no not right now like it, it's like i feel like it speaks to uh a, a very very important subset of apple users yeah. but not the majority of apple users at all in fact a lot I think of it's aspirational a lot of people though. feel a little left behind like well but i'm not doing that i think a lot of people are aspirational though like uh, apple yeah. markets this at folks who are working in the industry, for sure. That's the pro model. But it also markets it at that 21-year-old who's like, I'm going to be the next major creator. I'm going to be the next YouTube sensation, independent filmmaker, etc. cetera. Uh, and I think they sell a lot of them on on the promise of it, too. So that, that's why they continually that. hammer yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, more features to come in 18.2. So maybe the the, uh, the stuff that didn't wow me in 18.1 uh, starts to pile up. That's when we get the Google lens -y type stuff. Uh, and I know a lot of folks out there are not U.S. English speakers. So your versions, again, reminding you, uh, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, South Africa, and U.K. get localized versions of Apple intelligence so they can understand your variants uh, of English. That comes in December. And then non-English languages starting next year. Um, it did seem like they, they mean like Q1. Uh, so we're talking Chinese, French, Japanese, Spanish, possibly other languages, but those are the four that they mentioned. Let's check out the mailbag. Let's do it. If you're taking a trip soon, and I hope you are, uh, Chris Christensen has some news on how Alaska Airlines is investing in a new plane design that could help save on fuel and emissions the next time you fly. This is Chris Christensen from Amateur Traveler with another Tech in Travel Minute. Alaska Airlines is trying to reduce their fuel burn and reducing their carbon emissions, and they're putting their money where their mouth is with an investment in the Jet Zero startup. This is a company that is trying to make blended wing aircraft designs. So this is something where the wing isn't just attached to a tube like a modern aircraft, but looks more like a stealth bomber where the body and the wing are more integrated and therefore reducing drag and making a more fuel efficient airline. They're targeting 
including having something they can show in 2027 and then going into production in 2030, they've already received $235 million grant from the Defense Department towards this effort. So keep an eye on Jet Zero and let's see if they can come up with this very futuristic looking aircraft. This is Chris Christensen from Amateur Traveler. This is the first time I've heard Jet Zero, like Net Zero, Net Zero Emissions, Jet Zero, like... I mean, it's catchy. How did they... Like, maybe somebody had that before, but that that's that's pretty smart, <laughs> pretty clever there, Alaska Airlines, especially... It is Jet Zero dot arrow, so, you know, <laughs> maybe somebody else has Jet Zero dot com. It's poetic. Uh, if some of you were confused earlier when I was like, uh, Sarah was calling this shady, uh, Sarah's going to tell you how you can hear her talk about that and get the context. Indeed. So we had a, we had quite a ball on Apple vision show yesterday. We were awaiting this announcement for months. It was very exciting. And so the latest episode of Apple vision show covers Apple's glow time event, everything that was talked about. Um, and we went through it all, um, ad nauseum every week. Eileen, I, Rivera and I cover all things Apple and we would love for you to join us. You can get subscribed now at applevisionshow.com. If you are a patron, the show doesn't end now. Stick around for the extended show, Good Day Internet. We're going to expand on our James Earl Jones conversation with the news that a music label has released a song sung by an AI. Uh, so not a human singing this song. Stick around. We're going to talk about it. You can catch our show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern. That's 2000 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We're back doing it all again with Scott Johnson. Talk to you then. The DTNS family of podcasts. Helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. (laughs)